If you are just joining us, all of America is anxiously awaiting. Here's how the race looks tonight. We're talking about the presidential election. Joe Biden is at 264 electoral votes compared to President Trump's 214. It remains unchanged from yesterday. As five states, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Nevada, North Carolina, and Alaska have yet to call their races. And the magic number, of course, to reach the president presidency is 270 electoral votes. And to talk more about the state of the presidential race on night four of our election coverage now is Fox 5 political analyst Carl Luna. Carl, thanks for sticking with us. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're down to just a handful of states and votes in some cases. The president insists this is far from over. What do the trend lines tell you? The trend lines are looking better for Joe Biden than for Donald Trump right now. Uh, Kathleen, if you, if you look at it, uh, in Nevada, uh, you're seeing Joe Biden's leads grow. Pennsylvania, it's growing. Georgia, growing very slowly. He's losing ground in uh, uh, Arizona, but it's at such a slow pace, it doesn't look like the president's going to be able to overtake him there. Um, with recounts and other things to be had, we're not going to have a final total in for a while. But there's so many ways for Joe Biden to put together his 270. Uh, he looks to be the odds-on favorite, to be sure, at this point. And Joe Biden came out and basically said that, that he uh, expects to win. He did not declare victory, but he did make clear one of his uh, top priorities if he is elected. So let's listen to a piece of what he had to say, and we'll talk about it. The work of the nation isn't to fan the flames of conflict, but to solve problems, to guarantee justice, to give everybody a fair shot, and to improve the lives of our people. We may be opponents, but we're not enemies. We're Americans. No matter who you voted for, I'm certain of one thing. The vast majority of the almost 150, Ameri 150 million Americans who voted, they want to get the vitriol out of our politics. We're certainly not going to agree on a lot of issues, but at least we can agree to be civil with one another. So if elected, how uphill of a battle is this for Joe Biden? You hear him there trying to unify the country and bring people together. And it's such a divided country. And you add on top of that this landscape that the president is claiming that Joe Biden's presidency might not be legitimate. Yeah, and that's the uphill challenge for Joe Biden. What he was doing with the speech tonight was to lay out this is the direction he'd take his presidency. He's showing himself to be the statesman who will reach out, and that gives him additional contrast with the way the president has reacted to the race so far. Now, you know, when we talk about how divided we are, it is true. I mean, about 70 million, 70 million. But only about 20, 25 percent of each of those figures or Republicans and Democrats are really that engaged, that committed to it. There are a lot of Americans who, at the end of the day, when you figure this out, they're going to say, hey, but well, the other guy won. And they're simply going to try to th uh, give him at least the benefit of the doubt. That's at least what Joe Biden is trying for. Uh, and hopefully, if you can pull some centrist, uh, centrist together, then maybe you can get some governing going on after the inauguration, working with the Republicans in the Senate. And maybe he's using this extra time as the votes are being counted to kind of get Americans accustomed to how he would uh, uh, approach things. The president did not speak today, but he was tweeting. And one of his last ones uh, was this one that we're going to show our viewers. And it had to do with his early leads disappearing, if we have it. If not, that's OK. The question is, uh, Republicans, Carl, did really well in this election, even adding some congressional seats. So how is it they were successful and those are legitimate wins when he was on the same ballot? The same reason when the ref calls it for your team, they are great. And when they call it for the other team, they're blind. The president's just trying to get a bit of manipulation of the facts out there just to advance the case so we can challenge the results of the election. But it's going to be an uphill struggle to do that. The bottom line is the votes were cast. It takes a while to count them. Uh, it's never the way things are at 1130 at night or 12 o'clock at night on election night that determines the final vote count. There's always there's, there's like 300,000 votes in San Diego still to be counted. And it really presents a contrast with the way Joe Biden was presenting himself. Biden, if he wins, will have won for being the non-Trump being the calmer sort of candidate, uh, and that's what he's staking out. But he's also staked out tonight. He is kind of inevitable, and now the, the country can start to adjust to a Biden presidency, putting Donald Trump on the defensive. 
And I know you already said that it's uh, anyone's best guess when this might be called. What do you think, though, that a lengthy legal challenge could do to this country that not only is already divided, but has been through a meat grinder this year between the economy and also coronavirus? I could go on. <laughs> Yeah, and it just adds more problems. At least we have the holidays for this to play out with to distract us. Bottom line is, more than likely, over the next few days or a week or so, uh, you're going to have the, the competent authorities award enough electoral votes to Joe Biden for him to claim victory. Donald Trump probably will not concede. Uh, but as time goes by and his legal challenges one by one fail in the different areas of the, of the country, uh, it adds more gravitas and legitimacy to Joe Biden. Oh, and the president also has a problem of running into basically the, the revenge of Bush v. Gore, because you only have until early December for states to certify things. And what the Supreme Court ruled in 2000 is if a state uh, can't certify something that their vote by a certain cutoff, they have to stop recounts and certify it as is. Uh, and in all those scenarios, Joe Biden wins. So uh, I think we are moving into a stage where most of the country will accept that Joe Biden won. Should it break that way? The president might not, but I think that makes him more irrelevant. Well, we certainly appreciate you breaking it down and laying out some of the scenarios so that we can prepare ourselves. It's been a, yeah. been a long week, and we sure appreciate your time, Carl. Thank you. All right. Have a good weekend.